phone rolling. I'm traveling to answer this question. What I want? What I want? What do I want? When I finished high school, I decided to travel. Everybody was like, no, go to study, you know, you're gonna waste your time. So I went to study four years and I waste my time for four years. Then I was like, fuck, I want to travel now. The <laughs> So right now we are packing the stuff, going to Tsumkwe, going to each hike on the highway, three people, that's not easy. Good Fontaine, Razer Ichirango, and this is those three guys trying to climb down this mountain, going through those elephant crazy and dancing around the fire and finishing making some music and uh, with a nice sun rising behind the mountain. Sorry guys, there is no mountain in Tsumpe. But I mean, we can draw nothing about Tsumpe. There is nothing there. <laughs> Yakinsikate, so right now we are in the back of the Baki, African style. Um, this guy took us uh, to Brutefontaine, so we are on the way. Now we are in Brutefontaine. Uh, uh, which is uh, five hours away from Tsumkwe. We took two lifts to arrive here, so we are quite tired again. Um, so here you can check around, like uh, here this, this is the, the, the um, petrol station where we have to maybe take a lift. But as you can see there is a lot of people waiting for it, so I don't know if it's gonna work. We're gonna try to each hike again, try our luck. This place is completely uh, no man's land, there is nobody, I mean, uh, yeah, that's uh, just like the no man's land before Tsumkwe. When we came here in the end of 1970, there was nothing. It was a raw virgin land. Not even some people around. The nearest some people were 
at the, the Tsumkwe and on the way to the Kavango River. My name is Diran, I come from France. I'm traveling now the world. Now I'm in Africa, in Namibia. That's something I see in the books. That's crazy. That's like I'm living in a movie right now. Up, on ouvre, on prend, on record, on prend, on remet, on referme, on peut y aller. I arrive in Namibia with the idea of going in the desert, seeing those beautiful landscape. A bit of adventure too, because in Namibia you don't have so much people, so you ride. I like when it's wild, you have a lot of animals. I like the danger too, I like when it's when you're not sure that you're gonna arrive at the end of the journey. Everywhere the wind can go, I'm just a leaf fucking blow by the wind and that's so great to live like that. They live in Messim, this one could it gonna camp. The challenges to open in the living museum, most of the community in the Junwas, like these people, they are hunter and gatherings. So most of the people are struggling with, with life, they are not surviving well. Now I can see everybody is surviving, they are getting little money from the visitors. <laughs> Kanamakaje is uh, where is my meat and you have to find your meat. When you start, every time you pull out, so you say, um, you say Kanamakaje, and then they, they say um, uh, EJ, is it this one? You say yes, so they put out. Then they say again, is it this one? You say no and yes, and then that's a game of memory till the end, you have to arrive till to the end. In those years, they nearly lived like animals. They were grazing like animals, because wherever they go, they start eating from the berries, from the bushes. Mm. I find some berries, I don't know, maybe uh, that's poison. <coughs> Charlie, actually. <laughs> They're gonna ask anyway. You must favorite food, what the women's gathering, they are going to collect it, a lot of them, and we take it to the village. Okay. They are going first to roast it in the fire, yeah. after roasted they are going to pump it. My wife is sitting next to me, her name is Ngai Mu. When I met her in Chumque, I was also asking her that these relationships, what we are doing, will your family accept me? Then she said, no, I'm the one who loves you. This is my house, I'm having two women. Another one who's sitting next to me is my wife. So that is a traditional married wife who's sitting next to me. So the another one is still want to drain. Mm -hmm. 
There are some people there are meat eating people. I saw for myself that out of 20 or 30 of them, there will only be one great hunter. The one where, who in their own words they said, have the right stink. If he come to a spoor, he can tell you exactly when did that buck went there. Was it in the morning, afternoon or at night time? In my opinion, they can't hunt anymore. They don't dare to hunt because conservancy don't allow them to hunt. We left early in the morning, take a cup of java, like every morning. From there, maybe if we had something, a little piece of bread or something, or maybe nothing, it happened to. But we need straight to go to hunting, so it's good if we can just eat just a little bit. So we went to hunt with Konga. I call him Konga because I don't remember his name, and Konga is the grandfather in a Jungwasi language. The other one was uh, Nani Roma, and Nani is uh, six, and Roma is little guy. I wanted to go naked, fit naked, but they told me that uh, I'm not enough bushman for that, so I just took my velt scooter and my shoes, and uh, I went there. We walk in this beautiful landscape for two hours and watch around us, be really silent and uh, check all the paths of the animals. We find some holes of porcupine. That was the first day because we went hunting two times. The little guy who is uh, an expert in porcupine hunting. He's 
very small so he can go inside the holes of the porcupine and stay there for more than one hour in the complete dark just find his way with the smell and I mean that was completely crazy. We were not lucky, there were no porcupines. We didn't find something else than this big frog and uh, Kunma was just like playing with it and laughing a lot. <laughs> when we came back, of course, we were a bit disappointed because we were really hungry. I mean, we really needed meat, we needed to eat. I don't care of what we're gonna take, but we just wanted to eat meat and eat something actually. We came back starved and we just took a cup of java and sleep the whole day. Although they are the oldest race in Africa, they are the least developed race in the whole Africa. Even here in our country, where things after independence are happening so fast. Talk to them, you will see for yourself that they are clever people and clever people want to be educated. They want also be teachers and so on like the other tribes in Namibia. The tourists, they want to come to see those people, they want to see that race who are still living from the felt. You can't live in a communal area. You saw for yourself here how the sun people live. They are staying there. They don't know if they can stay there tomorrow again. Because maybe government wants the land for something else. They have to move again. They have to move again. It's not their land. Gunakukulsite <laughs> Oh, it's a shin hakan aka. Music is for them their way to express their culture for every every single aspect of their culture. Mainly it's just sound. Oh, hey, ooh, hey, hey, ooh. But it's making something in you. It's making like, ah, ooh. You, you feel something like in your body. I can't explain it, but I really love it and I didn't want it to stop. Mikko on 
What I saw is, uh, is that what I experienced? Every time at full full moon, that's a lot of dancing right through the night. The women they are going on with the same song, clapping hands and all this. It's only going like Ah, <laughs> The <laughs> Kaka <laughs> Tisa can go and
Six months changed me a lot, and I think now I'm on my way. I came without a way, I came because I was lost actually, lost in my life, and now I find my way. Africa is the mother of the world, that's what people say. It's the mother of humanity. It's where the first human were. So I think that's why I came here too. I'm so out of the nature of the real human way to live. I'm so out of it. I'm a little robot. I just know how to make fucking pasta and, and fried eggs. And if you put me in the nature, I'm gonna die. Here is our last day in the camp. I'm feeling quite strange uh, of living uh, because we stay all week with them. We learn who they are. We are quite close to them now and it's quite hard to live. I learned how to survive in Africa and survive without money, survive in another atmosphere. And I survived, but I didn't survive by myself. I survived because of the people. For me, during this adventure, I learned what is it to be angry? We are comfortable and they are struggling a lot. I was waiting for the red sun on my boots, African dust red. We have nothing with us when we go out of this world. When we're gonna die, the only thing we're gonna carry with us is our story. My story, their story, our story, all together. That's how we're gonna make the world better. Here we are, guys. The documentary is finished. Thank you for everything. Huh? Thank you for the support. Here is your, here is your gift. But I still do my own way Do you wanna have to follow their way? I just wanna be myself and be free You wanna snap again till they do your way But I still do my own way Do you wanna have to follow their way? I just wanna be myself and be free Let's go.